Let's take a closer look at the structure of the valves. Uh, we know that the AV valves separate the atria from the ventricles, and then the semilunar valves are guard the exit uh, to the heart. So let's take a closer look at the AV valves first. The way that I depicted the AV valves earlier might be kind of confusing. You know, it looks like this big, you know, abstract um, structure, you know, anchored down by the cordy tendinii and the papillary muscle. The way that the AV valve works reminds me a little bit of a shower curtain, if that makes any sense, like an old-fashioned shower curtain, say where you'd have like a circular um, uh, pole at the top and then the curtain would hang from that uh, circular pole, you know, and it'd say it's free at the end. So if you can imagine this is a shower curtain, this is kind of the way the AV valves look. It's this fibrous tissue that's kind of like a, a curtain or a sheet, so that when blood above that valve, which would be in the atria, flows through that area, there's no problem. The blood flows uh, straight through this kind of like sheet-like material, the AV valve, into the ventricles, but what happens is that as the blood enters the ventricles, of course, you know, the ventricles start to fill, so the volume of the ventricles starts to go up. And when the volume goes up, the blood will also go on the other side of this valve, and that's what's going to force that valve shut. So when ventricular volume and ventricular pressure increases, it just passively forces this valve shut. The AV valve is not regulated by the nervous system. It's not going to open and close at certain times. It's simply open and closed based on pressure changes. I gave you a picture in the notes that looks like this. Let's see if we can make any sense of this picture. So they're showing us the same kind of thing, where as long as blood is flowing from the atria into the ventricle, it will flow right past this um, AV valve, which is kind of like the fibrous shower curtain. There is the cordy tendinii papillary muscle. And as the blood flows into the ventricle, the ventricular chamber fills. And so as blood volume increases, especially when the ventricle starts to contract, ventricular pressure increases, that blood is going to go on the other side of that valve, kind of like air underneath a parachute, and it's going to blow it shut. The reason that it doesn't blow back into the atria is because the cordy tendinii are anchoring that valve tightly shut. Let's take a look at the semilunar valves. Semilunar valves I depicted earlier as um, being the exit of the ventricles. And then we took a look at the fact that the semilunar valves are in the same plane as the AV valves. So here are the semilunar valves. Semilunar valves are very different. Taking a look at this um, depiction of a transverse section through the heart showing here are the two AV valves. I can see that they're closed. That would be like, you know, the air underneath the parachute. Here are the semilunar valves. They each have three little flaps that just rest against each other like a tripod. So if the pressure is higher outside the valve, the blood sitting on top of that valve is going to keep it closed. But if ventricular pressure gets higher than the blood vessel pressure, it would blow the valve open. Let me show you what I mean. So taking a look at this picture that I gave you in the notes, uh, what they're showing us, let's take a look at this picture first, is down here, this would be the, the ventricle, that when the ventricle contracts, it's going to push blood across that semilunar valve, it's going to blow those three flaps open, just due to pressure alone, and blood will exit. But as blood exits, the volume of blood and the pressure of blood in the blood vessel on the other side of the valve is going to start to increase. And so when that volume and pressure exceeds ventricular pressure, there's going to be a little backflow because blood just wants to go from an area of high pressure to low pressure. And that little backflow is going to snap that valve shut. Each one of those cusps is kind of like a cup-like shape, as you can see here. So if blood tried to move back into the ventricle, that will automatically close the semilunar valve. Let's mark up the notes on the um, description of the AV valves and the semilunar valves. So with the AV valves, the AV valves are composed of a fibrous sheet of connective tissue anchored into the opening connecting an atrium and a ventricle. This is what I described as the shower curtain. 
So this fiber sheet extends into the ventricles. Its lower border is attached in the ventricles by these fibrous strings called the cordy tendinii that attach to papillary muscles. Papillary muscles are mountains of muscle in the ventricles. This anchoring system is intended to prevent backflow of blood from the ventricles into the atria. So as I tried to draw for you, uh, the valves regulate flow in one direction from the atria to the ventricles. As long as the blood is flowing in that direction, you're fine, but once the ventricular pressure increases and blood could uh, backflow into the atria, that blood is going to act like air underneath a parachute and shut the AV valves. The semilunar valves work in a similar way. They have a different structure. They're composed of three wedge-shaped pieces of thick connective tissue. They rest against each other, kind of like a tripod. Each of these wedges forms a cup-like depression on its superior surface. We saw that. So those three cusps are just resting against each other, um, typically. On the right, it's called the pulmonary valve. On the left, it's the aortic valve. What they do is they regulate flow in one direction from the ventricles into the blood vessel so that if ventricular pressure exceeds blood vessel pressure, those valves will open, blood will leave, and then they'll close if blood tries to backflow. I mentioned this before, when the uh, AV valves close, that's the first sound that we can hear, that's a lub, and when the semilunar valves close, that's the second heart sound that we hear, the dub.